Hey, Farouk back at you again with some more practice. This one is under geotechnical engineering, lab and field testing. Before solving this, keep in mind, I do have a preparation course for the civil FE exam, and it might be the right solution for you. If you've been out of school for a long time and need to start from the basics, where someone will teach you everything and not assume that you should know it, should know that, this may be it. I'm going to go slow and I'm going to teach you everything from the fundamentals. We're going to go topic by topic, one topic at a time per civil FE exam NCS specifications. We're going to cover a lot of practice problems instead of watching videos, instead of reading. You're going to apply yourself and you're going to go through thousands of practice problems. You don't have to know it all, but you're going to know just enough. You're going to feel confident to solve these with me. Then you're going to take those skills to the real exam and pass it. And obviously, you're going to have my unlimited support. Anytime you're stuck on anything, anytime you have questions, you got me to help you. Check out the link below if you're interested. Okay, let's look at this one. It is different. And notice it's not calculation based. It's testing the process and whether we know the process of a classic traditional geotechnical site investigation. Read in the problem statement. During a geotechnical site investigation, the following activities are performed. So number one is collection of undisturbed soil samples using thin wall tubes. Number two is laboratory testing, Atterberg limits, moisture content. Number three, standard penetration test, the SPT test using split barrel sampler. Number four, triaxial shear strength testing in the lab. And number five, drilling through soil layers down to the bedrock. Now, which of the following shows the typical order of these steps? Pause the video. Is it A, B, C, or D? What's the typical traditional order? What'd you get? So we will talk about this a little bit conceptually. There is a typical order that we will cover and I want to visualize that through this handy figure. So this is what we do. We take our truck with our drill rig. So we drive this, we put it at the location we're interested in and we're gonna drill. So that's gonna be what we see at this location. Then we're going to drill through the layer. So in this one, it shows layer one through layer four. Then at the very bottom, we hit bedrock. So we will drill and notice something important in the figure here. We have something called undisturbed samples. These consist of hydraulically pushing a thin wall tube. So for undisturbed samples, we get a thin wall tube. It's a thin walled shell B tube keyword. And this is undisturbed. And these is going to give us a recovery relatively of an undisturbed sample for the laboratory testing of mechanical properties. Key word here, undisturbed sample. We use that to get mechanical properties, shear strength, compressive strength. And we do the consolidation test with these undisturbed samples. So for the undisturbed sample, we have that key word along with the thin walled tube or thin walled shell B tube. So that's the undisturbed. And in this one, it's highlighted in black just to show us that. Then we have the disturbed samples. So these samples are disturbed. So they're not going to keep that in situ on site condition. And these are going to be taken using a drop hammer system. Classically, the split barrel sampler, split spoon sampler, where we have a steel hollow tube. These are the disturbed samples, and we will look at these disturbed and do the soil classification, sieve analysis, Atterberg limits. We can even do the carbon co content test for the disturbed samples. So these are what we do, undisturbed, disturbed, undisturbed, thin walled shell B tube, disturb the split spoon barrel. Now, to help you see this, let's look at this figure. This is the standard penetration test, the SPT. It uses the split spoon barrel. These are always for disturbed samples. So these samples that we see are disturbed and we use these for classification, Atterberg limits and so on. Now, when we look at the thin walled Shelby tube, this is pushed hydraulically. So it's not pushed with a drop hammer with a force. It is hydraulically pushed through the soil. And these give us undisturbed samples for the mechanical properties, strength, shear strength, triaxial test, unconfined compression strength, and consolidation. That's how that would look for the undisturbed, giving us a closer approximation of the on-field in situ condition of that soil. 
So that is what we see for both of these. Very important to note that when we do our drilling. And I want to show you this on a real boring log that we have here. So this one, the sample type, focus on this one for now. So this shows the sample type. We have a solid stem auger for this one. Now this is a Shelby tube. So this is a Shelby tube, SD Shelby tube. And the Shelby tube is going to give us undisturbed or disturbed sample. It's going to be undisturbed, undisturbed. And that in this case, actually, we do show the unconfined compression strength because we got an undisturbed sample. We did the unconfined compression test and got that value to be approximately that. So we know we can get that through the Shelby tube. Here is another Shelby tube that we do. Let's say at a depth from this 15, 16, 17, 18, from 18 to 20 feet, from 18 to 20 feet, where we have sandy lane clay, we get a Shelby tube, we can get the unconfined compression test, and we want to do consolidation. Look at the, how that clay, clay material consolidates. Consolidation test, we will need a Shelby tube for undisturbed soil sample. Now the other ones, so this one is not important. That's going to be a solid stem auger. Here's a solid stem auger. This here is going to be the standard penetration split spoon. So here, this symbol means split spoon. And notice we have the blow counts, three for the first six inches, four for the next six inches. Then for the last six inches, it's going to be the six. So the end value for this is always the last two readings for the SPT low count value. So the end value for that one is six plus four. That's going to be 10. And we can relate the end value from the SPT test to the density of the soil or other correlations that would be given in a table on the FE exam. Just note the higher the end value, the larger the density. As the end value goes up, the density of the soil goes up. And this one is also a split spoon that we do at this depth here and we have that as three and two for the last two readings so that will be an n value of five this has an n value of 11 so it's going to be 11 for the n value so some good stuff to look at here so i just want to show you that we do show this on the boring log in real life and the main type that we will look at is getting undisturbed samples through the shelby tube and disturbed samples that we get through that split barrel sampler then after that we proceed we have disturbed samples we have undisturbed samples the ones that come first let's say two to three days after we get the samples is going to be the classification and index properties so we can do the Atterberg limits liquid limit plastic limit we can do sieve analysis we can do the moisture content get that water content we can get the organic content we can do a carbonate content or a fall cone test if needed. So that comes first. That will always come first two to three days after classification index properties. Disturbed samples. Then for the undisturbed samples, looking at these, we get the tube and then we take it out and we do that important strength consolidation type of properties. So this is two to three weeks and we have the consolidation compression unconfined compression test, consolidation test. We can do the direct shear strength to get the cohesion value, to get the internal friction angle of the soil. And we can do that very important triaxial test for undisturbed samples. So this is basically it. That's all we need to know for this. And to answer this question, what's going to be the order? What comes first? Number five, we drill through the soil layers. That's what we do. We put the drill work just drill through it. So that one will be number five that comes first. So this one is obviously going to be B. So on the exam, I want you to do this. If it's obvious, pick B and move on. This one's tricky. They're trying to trick us and make us think it's between A and D. They'll maybe do that on the exam. It is B for this, but let's explain why. So we start with this. That's number one. Then we move on to the standard penetration test, the SPT using the split barrel sampler. So we go to number three. Then from number three, what do we do after that? We're going to look at the collection of the undisturbed soil samples using the thin wall tubes. Keep in mind the SPT gives us the end value, the end value, and also the split barrel 
gives us which samples the disturbed samples. So we already got the disturbed samples. Now we go from three and go back to one here to get the collection of the undisturbed soil samples using the thin walled Shelby tube. So we do have to take out that split barrel, move it back up, replace it with a Shelby tube, then hydraulically go down and get a thin walled tube. And that tin wall tube, Shelby tube, gives us the undisturbed soil samples. So we go five to three to one. Then we first determine the very important classification, Atterberg limits, moisture content. So we go from one to two. Then from two, we finish off with the shear strength test, triaxial test, unconfined compression test, and the consolidation test using our values for the undisturbed soil samples. So we go back here to four to finish off. So the steps are five. We go from five to three. From the standard penetration test, we can get disturbed soil samples. We go back to number one. We collect at the same time undisturbed soil samples. Then the first testing that we do is not, is not going to be the compression or mechanical testing. It's going to be classification, Atterberg limits, moisture content. So that's why we go to two here. Then at the very end, we finish off with mechanical testing, like example, triaxial test at number four.